having uh, two video opening at the same time here. Yeah, yeah I, uh, the YouTube live is actually running simultaneously. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, maybe you want to come uh, go from the beginning because was the, the the sound is not clear. Maybe clear out what's notify from the beginning. Maybe everybody can hear us really well. All right. So, uh, uh, I, my my name is Samir, and I'm the founder and CEO of Notified. We are delighted to present you our newest offering in Academy that gives you premium access to exclusive content, including webinars such as this. For those who are new to Notified, we are an exclusive platform for business professionals. Here, a subject matter expert can earn for their content, a solution provider company can promote their solutions to their target audience, and a business prof professional can seek solutions and expertise to stay relevant in their roles. What makes us unique is that our machine learning engine scans through thousands of our business professionals and identifies those seeking solutions. Uh, it matches them with those who have solutions, notifies and connects them in real time. What exists today requires you to search. With Notified, a new era begins where you don't have to search. Instead, you will get notified. I would like to thank you for the overwhelming response and wish you a happy learning. And for our viewers watching us live on YouTube and Facebook, we apologize that we, we couldn't accommodate all those who missed out due to limitations on Zoom. Uh, we promise to host you soon in upcoming webinars. Uh, I will now pass the mic to my colleague and moderator for this uh, webinar, Farooq Khalifa, <laughs> co-founder and VP Project Manager. What do you Farooq? Thank you, thank you, Samir. Uh, uh, thank you for this introduction. Uh, even the video was not a little bit uh, as <laughs> technically uh, sounds, but we can uh, repeat it in the end of this presentation, maybe. Uh, I would like really to welcome everybody uh, to take time and effort to join us for this uh, webinar. Uh, this webinar will, will focus on one, one simple thing is how, how you're going to be safe and how, how Hugh will share his experience on, on, on making it a reality. Uh, today, our, our speakers, uh, Hugh is uh, an expert in HSC and uh, and our risk management and HSC strategy policy formulation, development and implementation expert from United Kingdom, an award-winning HSC and risk professional who has driven major global improvement project in several uh, uh, large organization, a world-class performer and the mentor. He has received awards for best international risk initiative at the International Institute of Risk and Safety Management in 2018 and a mentor of the year at the International Institute of Risk and Safety Management in 2019. Uh, really, I would like to welcome uh, Hugh for taking the time and effort for, for sharing his experience. Before we move to, uh, to starting this session, I would like to establish some ground rules here uh, that the session will run for almost uh, 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, we are relying a lot on the Q&A session because um, uh, he has a lot of experience that you need to extract and learn. So we have more Q&A sessions uh, in terms of time. Uh, so during the presentation, everybody will be muted. However, if you have a question, you have two, two choices. One, you could uh, ask in the bottom section there, there's a Q&A chat room. You address your question and write it down. I will take it from there or by the end of the presentation, uh, we will open uh, the floor for everybody to ask questions directly to you. Uh, this case will uh, raise your hand. You're gonna, there's a hand there, you raise it. Then we give you the, the mic. So uh, again, I would like to welcome our expert, uh, subject matter expert and notify you, Maxwell, for taking a time and effort for offering his experience on how to be safe. Definitely, you have the mic, uh, Hugh. Uh, you can share your desktop right now. Okay, thank you so much Farouk and Samir for this opportunity to share this information. It's something I feel very strongly about and I would like to try and encourage others to develop a similar sense of purpose and in some really cases a level of commitment that enables them and their businesses to gain a great deal from this. So can you see my desktop as yet guys? Not yet, uh, you. Not yet. So you need to click on this okay. share screen in the bottom. Okay. Yes, I, I think. I think yeah, it's, it's there right now. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, guys. So what I'd like to talk to you today about is achieving safety excellence. And what my presentation is based on is things that actually have been implemented and worked, not just in one organization, but in a number of organizations around the globe, which were at different levels of safety maturity, 
and with different levels of uh, management buy-in. Different cultures have different perceptions of safety. And what we all want to try to do is achieve excellence, which means basically not harming people, not harming the environment, and basically trying to make a sustainable safety culture, which encourages us to do better day by day in all we do within the workplace, in terms of uh, our processes, in terms of our people, and in terms of the products we supply. So in terms of... Uh, Okay, uh, you, uh, we have one thing, we, uh, as you said, um, we would like to establish the floor for where they are, are currently. Uh, we have two questions I would like to uh, uh, see they are coming. Uh, we'll give you 10 seconds each question to give you a, your answer. I think the first question, are you engaged in a company-wide safety improvement program uh, as an individual? Are you engaged in the company-wide safety improvement program? Uh, you have 10 seconds, yes or no answer. Please uh, click and uh, we'll share the result with you immediately. So um, two seconds and we are ready to, um, to see the results. So Samir, if you have the result, maybe you wanna share it. Wow, <laughs> this, is, this is fantastic. It's really, really uh, impressing. We have very, very, very uh, engaged uh, workforce here. That's great. So let us go for the second question. Okay, do you, uh, do you engage uh, employees at all level and use them as the enabler of, for true safety leadership? Again, yes or no? Do you think this is uh, everybody involved uh, from all the level? I believe this is the purpose of this question. Or just uh, people up, high, up higher, they are the people leading this and the other they just followers. So um, two seconds and we show the result. Okay, we still we still okay, uh, you maybe <laughs> that's that's a good indication. Not very strong, you know. Four out of five people being able to say that employee engagement's there already. Yeah. So so if that's that that's such a high level of, of of leadership, are we achieving the world class performance we want to? I would imagine there's still a lot of companies out there have not managed to make that transition from being good to being great and from being great to being world-class. Now, there's a number of reasons why this doesn't happen and there can be a number of constraints within the business, but the important thing is getting that felt leadership, getting that engagement at all levels of the business. So what I'd like to share with you now within the, uh, the presentation, as I said, is what the purpose and objectives of safety excellence is. It's all about what I call frontline leadership culture development. Frontline, to me, means that everybody in the business is focused upon getting things right in terms of the leadership, in terms of shaping and polarizing their efforts towards good safety, good engagement, developing competence at all levels, and getting everybody involved in continuous improvement. It's a no-blame culture. It's moving totally away from this command and control, which was the typical hierarchical way. It means that everybody matters and everybody has their own cultural commitments. We try and reshape people and let them recognise their importance in terms of their contribution to the business. So it starts first and foremost with senior management, but it has to cascade and cascade evenly. Now, one of the reasons a lot of these safety programs don't work is that because either we miss out the key people, we don't involve everybody, we don't get the right people engaged because they're busy doing other things, or we don't sell the importance of safety. So there's a lot we need to do to try and refocus. Now, as, as already said, thanks to my friend Farouk, I've, this actual program I'm discussing with you was the backbone of why I received the Risk Excellence Award in 2018. And it, I, I actually worked in an organization, the high risk industry. In my first week as the global HSE director, 
I had to deal with a hand amputation for a contractor in Brazil on my first day on the job, which I thought was devastating. Even more traumatic to me, but not only to me, but to a number of our employees in the UK, four days later, I had to attend the police, the factory inspector, and represent our company when we were actually at the wrong end, when one of our guys was killed whilst he was working for us in a steel plant in the north of England. It's an experience I will never forget. It's an experience that reshapes, to me, the, the magnitude and the importance of having safety and good safety at all levels in all areas of the business, but also in terms of elevating safety as a true value to all businesses. Before we start making money, we want to make sure we do things safely. Make money afterwards because uh, there's no price on life and the, the experience, the trauma that myself and other people went through experiencing this fatality firsthand and for a 32 year old artisan working for us is something that I, I hope a lot of you never have to experience. So the important thing is getting management engagement first and foremost and making people realize that safety matters. No job is worth doing if you're not going to do it safely and you shouldn't take shortcuts. But equally important is not just the leadership. As I said, it's really us developing this journey, this long-term sustainable approach. You don't do one broad sweeping change that makes things world-class. It's lots and lots of little other, little other things that happen to reduce accidents, to reduce incidents. And it's important first you build the right foundation by trying to develop and harness the right behaviors supported by the right systems and standards. So we go from what really is an, an independent through to an interdependent state where world-class is not just an aim, it's not just an objective. We set the world-class standards and we look to continue to improve the way we do things here. And this doesn't happen overnight. This will take a number of years but the benefits are realistic when you see, a, you see a reduction in accidents, a reduction in severe accidents in particular, lost time, fatalities, depending on what the nature of the business that you do. So an important thing which I developed with a number of companies was not just using the, uh, the approach we've got, but setting ourselves a number of milestones in terms of establishing a safety and maturity roadmap. And you've got to give yourself realistic time frames where you're starting. Depends where your start point is. This is one company I worked with in 2018. They were looking, they were very much in the middle of the table. They were a strong performer. They were one of the strongest performers in their own business areas, but they weren't at the world-class levels of culture and operational excellence they wanted to be. And if we do want to become operationally excellent, a big part of that is the engagement of employees and starting with safety as a core value and building from that enables you to put the right foundation to build in quality, productivity, and ongoing sustainability within the business. So the important thing is that we identify where we are now, identify where the gaps are, and then develop the right management and business objectives to allow us to manage not just our day-to-day -day business, but incremental improvements to achieve to get to where we want to be. So the way I actually implemented it within, my, within the business I've worked, the important thing is it's getting the key influence of the business, which really is the key stakeholders who hold the purse strings and whose behaviours the rest of the business fall themselves on. The senior management team of the business are so critical. Their buy-in is really success or fail as to whether or not these, these uh, ongoing programmes are sustained and give you the realistic results and you can actually achieve. Now, the way I ran it with a number of businesses is to run a two-day workshop, delivered to the senior management team first, and then from that, cascade workshops where they lead the workshops. They take ownership because if they take ownership, they're giving the right vibes, the right messages to their people that these are the core values of the business. And then we enable this down to the sharp end of the business where the real risks are, get total engagement and get everybody to buy, to, to buy in Moving you away from measuring business to performance in terms of lag indicators, looking much more towards lead indicators. And through lead indicators, it means sharing a program where we focus on everybody being part of things like accident investigation, getting everybody looking for safety improvement opportunities, getting everybody involved in auditing their behaviours, their acts, and 
the behaviors of their colleagues in the workplace, looking for what I call SAO, safety improvement opportunities in the business, but allowing our workers, whatever their roles are, to grow as safety leaders, whatever the scope of control they have, letting them take ownership and letting them, empowering them to make decisions that hope to improve safety in the workplace. And on that, fundamentally, if you want safe working practices, we want to try and standardize the way we do things. There's only one safe way to do things usually in any business. It's important that we all accommodate and adopt that. And the way we establish that is based upon risk assessment. And from that, we can standardize, we can share best practices, we can engage others, and we can critically review how we do things to try and make it safer in the future. So I believe the firm start is to get senior management buy-in, give them a program where somebody coordinates it. As I said, I've run this program in over 50 countries around the world, um, and thankfully, Notified are taking this on board now. They will adopt the program and share the program in whatever, whatever mother tongues with whatever companies out there feel they can benefit from this approach. And again, it's important that having established where we are now, we look at our own business thereafter and establish what are we doing good at the moment? What are we doing bad? Where are the gaps? I sometimes support this with a employee questionnaires and behavioral perception questionnaires across all levels of the business because you'd be surprised just how often what we perceive is the thought of our workers and what the workers actually think are totally misaligned or the totally short shortfalls. We may think we're doing a great job on risk assessment. We may think we're doing a great job on communication. But you ask the guy at the sharp end, and because of the levels of management and other priorities, sometimes that message can either get diluted, distorted, or not delivered in the first place. So the important thing is to take a harsh, cruel look at ourselves. What are we good at? What are we not so good at? What are the things that are business critical to address and patch over short term when we need to put a more long term preventive action plan in? And what are the things that we can actually just work slowly on developing? So it's all about learning and it's all about being transparent with ourselves, with our workers. And it's all about engagement, whether it's from the senior management all the way through to even our contractors and our suppliers. So it's a big, big trust a big, big empowerment, empowerment and engagement process. It does take time, but you'll reap the benefits. The organization I first implemented this with had 15,000 employees and 5,000 contractors. It took me two and a half years, really, to get the full engagement of the companies. But fortunately, because we, like with most businesses, you get the early adapters, we are buying straight away. We picked on where we know that the people were going to adapt and set good standards that others could learn from. We also picked on the problem areas first as well, knowing full well that even if we didn't hit the heights we wanted to do, we would at least make achievements that were gonna benefit the business and stop injuring our people. Within the first 12 months of implementing this program, we brought the lost time injuries down within the business from around 170 a year to less than 60. No hiding, total transparency, making workplaces safer. And then, over a period of five years, we managed to bring down the number of lost time injuries to world-class standards. A little bit about myself. I always like to think I give my best. Maxwell tries to make a difference. And again, sharing with you what was recognized as being a world-class program, the best international risk initiative through Notified. I'm sure we can try and make a difference for you in your workplaces. So please, whatever questions you have, whatever issues you have, Please feel free to come back to Farouk, to Samir afterwards. We've got people around the world who can support, who can help. I'm sure with things we can do for you, looking, looking at safety excellence differently, I'm sure the things out there that Notify can do and add some value in your uh, journey towards safety excellence. Thank you. That's all I've got to say for now. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh, for this uh, very brief and uh, powerful message around uh, the steps being taken from... Um, as you mentioned, from 170 and fatalities to a world-class uh, organization. This, is, this doesn't come by just one man show. It is, a, as you mentioned, it is a, a group effort, team effort from all the way from the frontline people all the way to the top of management. And this is the, the reality with nothing gonna happen overnight, nothing gonna happen by one or two or three people uh, within, uh, within any organization. Uh, this is definitely we, we see everywhere. So uh, right now I will uh, see if there is somebody want to ask questions because I have some written question here. Uh, anybody want to ask question? You raise your hand. I will uh, will give you the mic.
look like we have a, a very shy <laughs> audience. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody want to take the mic? Uh, I will, uh, I will, uh, or I'm going to go through this. Uh, okay, I have Mubashir, he seems to be one of our uh, activists here. Uh, I saw him yesterday and he's, uh, he's uh, look like a very active pe person who are looking for, uh, for improvement. Mubashir, you have, you have the mic. I think you need to open the mic for uh, Mubashir Samir. Uh, and also I have a second guy. Sikar, I think. Go ahead. Okay, good morning, Farouk and everybody else. Uh, first of all, I appreciate for signing up voluntarily on this webinar. And I think in these pandemic times, um, any knowledge. Uh, can, Mubashir, can I ask you a favor? Can you raise your voice a little bit? It's a little bit low there. You look like you are far from the mic. Okay. Better now? Can you say? Can you hear Hello? me now? Yeah, perfect. Now perfect. Way okay. better. Well, okay. Good morning, Farouk uh, and everybody else, um, and Half Maxwell. Really appreciate for sharing this wonderful uh, information on a very very important topic. And Farouk, thanks for signing me up voluntarily on this webinar. And anytime I see safety. Uh, I'll go for it because nothing is uh, more important and paramount when we talk about safety as professional engineers. Uh, my question today specifically to the presenter is uh, primarily in developing countries, okay, we are not talking about North America and Europe, let's talk about the rest of the world. In developing countries, we have small organizations and large organizations, both in public and private. Yes. Uh, and how do you how do you take initiatives there everybody today knows about safety they talk about it but i know due to budget restraints due to lack of legislations how do you start an initiative there because over there still in some parts of the world this thing is seen as uh an overhead something uh maybe when it comes to money spending it's on the last priority so how do you deal with that? How do you develop this kind of mindset in order to convince them? Uh, I have seen in some research that why uh, in North America or Europe and some other parts of the world, safety is paramount now because safety, when we talk about QHSE, quality, health, safety, and environment, uh, they have found out that actually this is essential to the success of an organization. But how do you convey this idea to the rest of the world who is not that convinced yet? That's one of the issues that I had in the business I was in. It's a very good question, Mubasha. And in many cultures, it's really important that you understand what really, what are the nerve ends? What are the enablers? What are the things that turn people around and react? For example, in the poorer countries, there may be just the father or there may be just the son who is the breadwinner who earns the money in the family. The important thing, first and foremost, is trying to get the management buy-in and thereafter make sure that the, the people themselves understand the importance of their safety, not just to the business, but to their dependents as well. So the first thing I did when I rolled out the Safety Breakthrough um, initiative was I tried to develop first a regional structure. So I had somebody responsible for HSC and for helping me in the program in each region. And then at the country level, somebody, for example, in China or in India or in Indonesia or Malaysia or Australia, you know, in different countries, Mexico, Brazil, so that they knew what these enablers were. They knew how to get to the hearts and the minds of the people who were trying to get to buy in. Now, in many cases, people work in the steel industry a semi-literate or illiterate. So the important thing is to make the message short, sweet, succinct, and meaningful, something that they recognize and understand. So I think the important thing is, is making sure that people recognize their own worth, their own value, and how much not only the business, but families depend on it. And more and more as time changes, people are realizing in the developed world, you can't put money to lives. 
and nobody wants to be seen to be working for a company that's not committed to good safety because more and more governments are naming and shaming and these are the companies that are going to be left behind these are the companies that are going to be left and, and basically become unsuccessful and you made the very good point that people are starting to realize good QHSE enables good business and I think the more we can get the people engaged in that manner then these are going to be the, the going forward these are going to be the companies that are successful but it's so important you have somebody local who you're training these skills and these tools that can make sure that he gets the message across in something that means something to their workforce I appreciate it thanks thank you thank you uh, the next question I think I have um, here uh, Mr. Sikar, if I pronounce it right. I, if, I'm, I'm wondering if, if you would just start uh, saying your name and which country you are uh, calling from, just to know where, where you are staying right now. Go ahead, Sikar. The are mic, you, yeah, go ahead. Are you, are you hearing me? Yes, yes, good. Yeah, thank you so much. As you asked me, I am from Kuwait now. Right now, I am in Kuwait. Kuwait, okay, that's good. Okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah, nice. And nice uh, talking to you. And uh, let me, first of all, thankful to the organizer as well the trainer for arranging such a wonderful program to the mm -hmm. HSU professionals. Okay. And, and my query is, as uh, the previous uh, questioner asked that uh, it is a developed country. It is the program which is we developed in such a way that that uh, it is in terms of uh, safety, health, and environment. But even though we are having all the procedures, all the standards in place, and we are giving the training and communication to at each level of the employees but the employee himself or themselves shall come forward and understood that the safety is everybody's responsibility. Then only the first or forthcoming incidents or accidents can be avoided or can be prevented. But due to this training programs or due to the any presentation, due to the meetings through the HSE or uh, management or each level of the communication meeting. And the meeting, the same thing will be communicated to the all the levels to the up to bottom of the level of the employees. And my queries in this subject is how this communication to the reach to the bottom, I mean, bottommost employee, how can we convince that the safety is responsibility to each and everyone? This is my small question. That is what I felt from my side. I hope that you will understand and my question. Thank you so much. Sikhar, very good question. My friend, and very nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Sir. I've done a lot of work in Indian steel plants. Some of them have been uh, government owned, some have been private. And for example, the big difference is, although the difficult thing is, trying to make the people at the sharp end realize that it's not acceptable for them to get burnt, not acceptable for them to get hurt. Try and, what I call, raise their situational awareness and understanding of safety. A lot of people accept it's a steel plant, it's rough, it's dangerous, there's hot metal, the sparks. We've got to try and raise their expectations in terms of safety. One of the ways we've done that in the past is to share bad examples, bad practices, going into their first, no blame culture. In fact, making something of a joke to begin with lightly. Look, you know, who wants to work in this environment? And then you say to them, well, hang on, guys, this was you three days ago doing this and this, no blame. And then actually asking them, well, why are you doing this? It may be a fact that they haven't had the level of training or nobody's spoken to them. But it's so important you make it so relevant to where they are and the hazards they face. You're not employing them to be safety professionals, but what you are trying to employ them to do is to be safe, is to be professional safely. So when they undertake their work, their tasks, they do it in a safe manner, which doesn't compromise the safety of themselves, 
compromise the safety of others or compromise the overall production. So the important thing is to try and make things, you take these tools and techniques that are relevant, audit, try and encourage and praise for good behavior. But if there are bad behaviors, whether it's an error or a violation, we need to get to the bottom of it and try and train and re-educate people away from this. Does that answer your question, Sakala? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, and then uh, once again, I thank to the presenter and the way he explained is very nice and uh, I'm very much grateful to the organizer, those who have organized such a great event. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I have a question here written. It's about um, coming to the same question from, uh, from your uh, discussion right now on steel uh, 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 organization or steel plants. Now, from your experience, where the maturity level uh, seen uh, in the high end based on the industry? So I, I, I'm coming from oil and gas and I, I see oil and gas somehow, it's really good. I mean, they are doing, I'll not say perfect, but they're, they're okay. I mean, they're working hard day and day. And maybe when you come to other industry like mining, steel, where like killing somebody, it's like part of their business. <laughs> it's okay to kill, to kill one guy every year. It's okay, no problem. <laughs> so from your, from your experience being, being travel all, all around the world, what's the maturity level we see right now in the industries uh, around the world? Which one is in the top? Which one is a little bit required more? Well, as, you, as you're probably aware, nuclear is up there because it has to be. Because yeah, the okay, implications yeah, okay. of getting something wrong if it goes wrong, it goes dramatically wrong, as we know. Mm. Oil and gas is not far be, be behind that. But mm. more and more, we're having to try and raise the bar in every industry. It's important we use these as a benchmark, try and take the good practices that they have in the businesses, whether it's how they deal with people, whether it's how they deal with processes or systems, and try and ensure that we build as much. And this comes back to where we were talking earlier about, before this meeting, the three of us, about artificial intelligence. Yeah. making best use of new technologies, things like drones nowadays. We don't need people to go at height or go down and inspect dangerous pits. We can have some, we can have some form of computerized communication back to us without endangering the life of people. So I think the more we can harmonize the use of AI, the use of new technologies and protect the people factor, the way that industries like nuclear, the way that industries like oil, oil and gas are looking at things already, that needs to become the new norm as industries move forward. Okay, uh, I have other question here. It's about um, um, now creating this culture of safety where everybody, uh, we say safety is a very everybody business. This is the slogan you can see most of company uh, yes. deliver. Two things I usually see, safety is everybody business and safety first. It's a slogan written somewhere, everybody yeah. see it. Uh, but still, in reality, a lot of organization, they take just the title and now in reality, maybe a little bit different. Now, coming to create a culture change in any organization, do you think we should have a tragedy? What you mentioned in your early, uh, early presentation that you came on board and there was problems. They need somebody to take over and help. Do you think we should kill somebody and create some tragedy to create such a, a culture change within our organization? Wh where we need, uh, what's the point we have to reach to the realizing that is enough is enough and let us, let us, uh, let us do something about it? Farouk, I truly hope that that's not the case, that we don't wait, wait till somebody has to deal with the situation because it can put some organizations back. It can lead to senior managers and even other employees going to prison. So the ideal thing is let's share lessons learned from other people's experiences, other people's misfortunes, and make sure that doesn't happen here. The dangerous managers are the ones that sit there, blase, sit back and think, it's never gonna happen to me. Mm -hmm. I worked with one of those managers many years ago and he was devastated when it did happen on his watch to a business he was responsible for. And like the business I talked about, the business I was working for, they, on terms of safety, they were very strong. They were very committed, but they weren't focused. And the whole message did not cascade to all employees, in particular employees working in the high risk environments. Mm -hmm. So the important thing is, is consistency. The important thing 
It's not waiting till something happens and goes wrong. It's about prevention rather than putting it right afterwards. We all know that prevention is better than cure. And this is where I would strongly urge the safety leaders and the people on this call, however you can influence it, make that change. You've already got programs in there. Take what you can from this today. Make sure you get that level of engagement and take things to the next level before waiting or before leaving the door open for a disaster or some tragedy. Okay, um, anybody has any other question? Uh, you can direct the uh, question directly because I have some uh, written question here, but I, I prefer to see my audience alive because we are broadcasting live uh, webinar. That means we have people already alive with us. So I'm assuming they are uh, ready maybe to ask question directly to the instructors. Since Hugh is here and he's a, an expert, you cannot meet every day. Huh? This is something you should know. Uh, anybody has any question you would like to raise your hand so we can take it? Uh, definitely, I'm, I'm gonna keep asking this because I don't, I like, I, I like people speak up because one of the things I, I'm, I'm gonna connect it to the safety. Uh, one of the reasons a lot of organization, they cannot improve, generally speaking, people, they don't raise their concern. I mean, they keep quiet, they, they see the issue, they see the problem, but they never raise it because they think uh, it's gonna be something bad for them or they're gonna be labeled as a black sheep. So what's your message here, Hugh, for our uh, audience, first of all, to make them ask questions? Please feel free, we're very open. Yeah. Um, we're very open, notified as a forum. We have numerous ways you can communicate and ask your questions. If you feel too shy, or feel it may be putting you or your company under the spotlight. Safety doesn't work that way. We all try and engage and help each other. I mean, this is this is stuff I shared from previous lives in different companies. And I really, I really feel strongly that the more we can share these type of messages. I went and visited places like Blue Scope in Australia. Uh, I've worked with different companies around the world, sharing their best practices, not reinventing the wheel. So the important thing about safety is that you're not competing um, we're all trying to preserve lives. The one thing we're not competing is to make sure we're safe and the guy next door isn't. The safety professionals, we try to share, we try to encourage, we try to coach and mentor and develop others. And all of these values are what uh, Notify can offer as a service or as individuals, wherever you are in the world. Okay, uh, one question here came uh, written is, um... Uh, now we have an, uh, an, uh, an aging workforce. Um, uh, that's um, something maybe related to uh, ergonomics of how you, you, they have to utilize certain uh, tools. Uh, this is maybe one part of it, but the same, same question may, may raise another question, which is now I have a lot of senior people leaving the industry, uh, more experienced people who saw that a lot. And uh, we have a lot of young force coming to, uh, to the industry and uh, they may not exactly uh, understand what does mean working for say a refinery maybe, or because some, myself, I was working in an organization and uh, I was this message always saying that, hey guys, you are working in any refinery and refinery, there is a lot of places where things gonna go wrong. So be careful. And don't expect yourself coming every morning that you're gonna leave this afternoon because if you are not taking it seriously, you are not coming to a, an ice cream plant. There is a lot of vessels there and these vessels represent a pump, could explode at any point of time. So taking, a, taking safety seriously, it's, it's something you should consider it for the young generation. So from the question I see here, it's about how uh, aging workforce gonna face some difficulty working in an environment maybe is not fit to them uh, uh, or how when they leave and the young force come to the to the uh, to the industry how how this big gap gonna gonna impl impl implicate uh, the safety uh, safety improvement well i think this comes back to what i said to you about the importance of having a risk-based approach doing good thorough risk assessments of the activities and the processes and ensuring that the standardized work is maintained and kept up to date because that allows the guys over time to be trained. You'll never replace that depth of knowledge and losing good people, losing old people, whether it's because of um, business constraints or whether it's because of retirement or whatever. But 
with the young people coming in, I, I mean, I'm a big believer in having the right balance in terms of diversity. The young people coming in have a fresh pair of eyes. They have uh, a more mature outlook when it comes to the use of IT and technologies. So I see the young people coming in with the right level of training and awareness about the existing business can help to take safety to the next level. They're coming in at a time where we went through really the safety revolution. Really in the UK from about the 1970s, Health and Safety at Work Act come in. The generation I've been working really has been the safety revolution as I see it, where people are realizing that nobody comes to work to get hurt. Your welfare and well-being is important. So I think it's an opportunity if we can harness this energy. And yes, the older people may have certain limitations that we should do the risk assessment and redesign the job. And hopefully technologies have come out. But ideally, the older people's knowledge should be shared and disseminated and with the young people and not challenged aggressively, but challenged to say, right, OK, we've always done it this way, but can we do it safer? OK, in the same manner, uh, there's a question around uh, it is the issue of training or it's a mindset issue because you could, I think one of our, uh, Mubashir, I think he, he mentioned, or uh, Sikhar, he mentioned about, it doesn't matter how much procedure you have, how much policy you have. We have a lot of stack of papers, okay? Yeah. Now, if the people, they are not there here, doesn't matter you what you do. So it's the problem here we you see from your experience working around the world. Is the issue, the challenge from, uh, preventing safety improvement is the mindset or the type of training people don't have or both or whatever i don't know i think sometimes the problem we have as you said is we perhaps try and train people on the wrong things or too many things which really identify what are the significant risks of that people the people are exposed to in their job what are the things that can potentially hurt them or do the most damage to them or the business and as such, try and focus their uh, risk awareness, raise their risk awareness relative to the types of hazard that they face in that environment. Once they develop that maturity and that understanding and that um, respect for the risks, it's important that we start evolving and giving them greater knowledge and greater empowerment. But I think the first phase is to give them the right amount of training in terms of risk assessment, knowing when to say no or knowing when to stop so they don't injure themselves. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, a question came about uh, COVID-19. Uh, right now, COVID-19 um, make uh, some workforce work from home and uh, make uh, the work people who are doing an actual job in the field less. Now, okay. having less people, it is what's the challenge we face today from a, from a COVID-19 type of uh, situation we have right now? on the safety is, is making it better, making it worse, nothing changed. What, what do you see there? The thing, I think the important thing, right, with COVID, it's with, um, the, the, the situation it's pushed people into, I think it's made a lot of businesses realize that for a lot of jobs, people can work safely remotely. Mm -hmm. Now, the important thing is that we are gonna have people in the plants, we've gotta make sure first and foremost, they're safe. And we're gonna make sure as well, we have the right people in the plants to allow the business to to thrive and to continue as it needs to, even if it's just a bare minimum. One of the problems I think sometimes we think because we're the boss, we've got to be present, presenteeism. We're not always the people that make the, uh, the cogs go round. We're not the people that make the business tick. It's important we have the right people there that make the business tick, but it's equally important that their, their safety, their welfare, their well-being, that they feel both mentally and physically safe in going about that business. So I think the one thing we've had to do in a lot of countries, a lot of companies around the world, is actually refocus upon what was previously seen to be a, a soft issue, things like office safety. It's become much more higher priority. And I think it's made people re recognize now, not, it doesn't matter whether you're working as an engineer you know, in the field, mm -hmm. whether you're operating a machine, or whether you're working at a desk uh, behind a, a computer, your personal welfare is paramount. COVID has raised the bar in terms of the exposure and the potential to, to, to infect other people. But I think it makes people much more sensitized now to the importance of managing their risks in their workplaces. 
Okay, uh, I have uh, Mubashir coming back with uh, some question. If you would like to open the mic for uh, Mubashir Samir. Okay, thanks uh, for giving me another opportunity to- Mubashir, to which, which, which uh, location you are calling from? I'm in Edmonton, Alberta. Edmonton. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm an Edmonton too, so <laughs> we are neighbors. Okay, that's great. I, I saw that uh, from your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we may have to chat face to face later. <laughs> we'll do that sometime for sure. Okay. Go, go ahead, go ahead with your question. Okay, um, actually it's more of a comment. It's so important, um, this topic itself, safety, because uh, as the presenter mentioned, uh, there is no price for human life. Uh, Although it may pose uh, risk for the assets as well, but definitely human uh, protection paramounts. And what I would like to add to that is a lot of time when we are going for safety implementation and we are hiring experts for that, we go for credentials. Okay, you know, what kind of certification, what kind of trainings they have. With my over 20 years career now into engineering and in various industries, what I have seen, uh, something which is even more important, and please, I would like to hear your feedback, Farouk and uh, Mr. Maxwell and others. What is more important is actually what kind of culture that person has worked, especially if he's going into uh, a role that, that he or she is responsible to implement safety. Uh, because credentials are very important. Yes, trainings and credentials, certifications, education, but something which really changes the mindset. And it is very important to implement or practice safety. It is the mindset, it is the culture. And what develops the culture, what develops your mindset, it is the environment around you. So first that person, he or she has to, has, uh, they must have spent some time in, in an organization where safety was paramount. Uh, this is a comment I like to make because I have seen organizations going for credentials, but then when you, when you see the person coming from an organization where the culture of safety was not that great, uh, I really think that person is not going to, going to contribute much just through his or her credentials. So what are your thoughts about that? I fully agree with your comment regarding the fact that the people need to have had the first-hand experience. And sometimes, whether that's in a world-class organization or whether that's implementing a program like Safety Breakthrough within your current organization, something where you can see the person's been a real game changer, because that illustrates the fact that people are given buy-in, people have taken on board, and they've managed to change effectively to make workplaces safer. So I think that's very key. And the important thing is you said about culture being influenced by people around you, which is really, really true, which again is why I come back to engagement, which is why it's so important to get everybody involved and engaged. As you're, you're more than aware, my friend, I'm sure, in any business, there's people who we make or we inspire to be managers, and we, we call them a leader because they're a manager. But informally, on the shop floor or whether it's in a work environment, there's a lot of people who are natural and natural leaders and naturally gifted and they take additional responsibility. And the other members of the team look up to them and recognize them as being either the leader or the influencer. And if you can get these people to buy in and wave the safety flag and deliver that message for you, this is where you get the others because they're the ones who have got the key influence. The important thing is credibility and trust. You've got to build that trust. You've got to gain that credibility. And if you've actually walked in their shoes and done the job with them or gone through the same change process, you're much more likely to be successful and to know how to approach the program, how to recognise what level of maturity, to recognise where the gaps are. <coughs> Excuse me. And somebody's just gone in there highly qualified with the credentials and never applied it. So I think you're totally right to the fact about being hands-on and, and pragmatic for the environment and culture in which you're operating. I just want to add something, uh, because being myself in 24 years experience in oil and gas and, uh, uh, and reliability and operation excellence, 
I, I always have this connection between safety and reliability. And uh, as we say, safety is everybody's business. I would like to promote reliability is everybody's business. And one thing I, I usually mention to my people when I create, I, I used to have what we call the reliability culture day where I work on the why part. I, uh, let us forget about the, what is the, the what and the how. Let us start with the why, because the moment I convince you with the why, it doesn't matter what I tell you later, it makes sense. And this is where I, I, I work, focus a lot on the why part. And one thing I, 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 um, I established there, it was uh, my last assignment with uh, Saudi Aramco. It was that, okay, let us let us say the company say safety first safety is everybody business but i was asking these guys and say hey why you think safety is everybody business because my boss says so no uh, I, I, but there is one fundamental reason why we should believe safety is everybody business not because my company told me that or my boss told me that i say let us believe on something that it's matter and I say, you know what does matter at the end of the day? Why safety is everybody's business? Because safety touching everybody, touching your life. What is more worth in the whole universe? It's about your life. Because if you don't want to care and say, this is not my job, uh, somebody doing stupid thing next day, he will kill us all. Uh, at the end of the day, I lose my life. Uh, who, who lost at that, time, at that point? It's me and my family. And I, I try to make it personal because the moment I make it personal for these guys, the moment they understand this is not about other told me something I should follow. It is me believing it because at the end of the day, it's matter because it's my life. I'm, gonna go to, I'm not gonna go, as you mentioned in, the, in your uh, early statement about steel environment and how, how you could start with a job. Who, who wanna work here? Do you, wanna, do you wanna get killed tomorrow? It's okay for you guys to work in such an environment where your chance to go home every day, it's like 50-50 chance. Do we, do we wanna throw a coin, which is a coin like this, I will throw it in the air and see what's my chance to go home alive today? I'm, I'm, I'm ready to work on such an environment. This is what matters at the end of the day. It's your life, it is your life, nobody gonna care about it more than you. So that's why it is your business and everybody business and this is a point I, I, I would like to emphasize about safety is not about because my boss told me or the company make me a sign for a statement, hey, you have to believe in it. It is me, I should care about myself because nobody else is gonna care about it. So that's right. where I, I think it's the, the point is, is your life matter. And that's why you need to be uh, care about you. And this is the, the mindset change. If you don't yes. care about your life, really, I don't want to work with you. you. You should go home or find another job or something like this. Very good point, my friend. Very good point. Uh, I have maybe another question here. Uh, uh, some people are asking about the, the education side uh, and what kind of uh, training there in the industry. Uh, and yourself as, a, as an expert, what, what you have in Notify right now as a training courses, because some people ask about training courses and how they get benefit from your uh, experience. Yes, we, we've got these courses here. We can share the course and course information. We have trainers in different countries, different nationalities who will be able to fast track and support the needs of, if people want more information, please get in touch, we notified. Okay. Um, now, one last question, since we are close to our time. Um, I will open that question uh, one, one last time here, if somebody wanna have a direct question. And I will, I will choose, uh, I'll do something different because a lot of time we say in safety, you could volunteer to do something. We ask for somebody to help us. We say, hey, there's any volunteers? And nobody yeah. show up. I say, okay, there is volunteer and voluntold. So you can be told what you have to do. So I'm going to make a random check here and see if I can pick a name and see if he is ready to ask a question or just introduce yourself. We don't need a question. I see a, a, a Michael, Michael Strange. Are you ready to tell us anything about safety? What's your concern? What brought you to this uh, to this uh, webinar, uh, we can open the mic for you, Michael. Farouk, this is a very good friend of mine from Chubb. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. A, great, a real Michael, you wanna, safety, you wanna, a Michael, you want to take them? You want? You've been you've been nominated to uh, to ask question or uh, give a comment, whatever. So this is maybe. Uh, 
uh, last part. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just listen, I'm just listening, but thank you. Okay, so you have any comments? No, except this is, uh, this is an extremely good forum. I've, okay. I've enjoyed hearing this discussion. Okay, great. Michael, uh, what are you doing? What's your background? Where are you calling from? Well, I'm an industrial hygienist and I'm uh, based in California. Okay. Okay, that's good, that's good. Uh, definitely, we need more and more people uh, being part of Notify community, and uh, everybody welcome to join us. If you didn't download the app, it's there in uh, Google Play and Apple Store. Uh, also, you can uh, check our website from time to time. There will be some uh, some uh, YouTube. Uh, we have YouTube channel. By the way, this is uh, already recorded and it's live right now on YouTube. If you if one of your friends uh, missed this, uh, you can um, send them the link. They can uh, learn uh, uh, from the recorded session, which is uh, right now uh, is being recorded. I see uh, Secure here uh, look like the last question here, and uh, I will uh, give after that the closing remark for uh, you. Uh, Secure, you have the mic. Thank you so much. Uh, I just I would look, would like to know Mr. Farooq Khalifa, Mr. Kari Khalifa, from which uh, country or which location? Just I would like to know that. I I right now in um, in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. I'm uh, stuck here because of COVID nineteen. Okay. I'm I'm, tra I'm traveling within the next four days to Edmonton, Alberta, my my hometown there. Your hometown, please. Yeah, Edmonton, Alberta. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, Thank you so yeah. much. It yeah. is uh, very. It is a very excellent platform to discuss each other and to share information. And the yeah. information was uh, uh, presented by uh, instructor, Mr. Gujula. So very nice and uh, really I'm thankful for getting this type of the interaction with uh, HSE professionals. So I hope that this will be continued in future also. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Uh, Thank uh, one thing, uh, uh, one one person he uh, asked us about the, uh, uh, he needs some education guidance and uh, and, and diploma uh, in industrial safety. Do you have a very specific maybe advice uh, to our one of our uh, uh, audience here asking what he want to look like? He want to specialize in safety. So if, if there is any uh, rec uh, internationally recognized diploma for somebody like he has a mechanical background and he would like to. Uh, uh, to move in the industrial safety. So what what you recommend as a, as a international recognized certification or diploma? It's a very different approach, whether we're looking at the US approach or whether we're looking at the, uh, the European approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely say there's a lot of good process safety courses out there. It mm -hmm. depends. If, whereabouts is he based? Uh, I think Gigans, Gigans, if you would like to tell us which place you are calling from and which uh, region, because he could give you the answer based on your location. Um, I th because he, he typed this question, so I'm assuming somewhere in the Middle East and Asia, I believe. Right. He didn't mention, but I there think are, this yeah. is... There's a, lot of, there's a lot of good people out there. I mean, I'm... Hello. Hello. Go ahead if you would like to ask a question. Hello. Yes. I yes. We can hear you. From uh, from India, and I have done a diploma mechanical after post diploma industrial safety. Recently, I have. Uh, uh, your voice is a little bit very low, but I can understand you are from India and you have mechanical engineering, and this is what I got. This is the course. Post diploma industrial safety after uh, diploma mechanical, and I have uh, eight years experience in the uh, safety field. So, uh, please give me advice about the uh, further education, sir. Okay, I, I got your question. So, he asking, he's from India, and he's uh, have eight years experience as a mechanical engineer, and he would like to specialize in safety uh, as a safety officer, whatever. What's what's your recommended for such uh, maybe in middle My East? recommendation. Is, I've, I've coached and mentored a number of Indian professionals, engineers, and be, I'll be quite honest with you, they've made some of the best safety professionals particularly coming from an engineering background that I've had the pleasure to work with on projects around the world. I would strongly recommend, from my own personal experience, having coached and mentored something like the NEBOSH General, International General Certificate to start with, 
They also now do an international certificate in process safety. Okay. So these courses are available in India through the British Safety Council. And from there afterwards, there is an international diploma. But there are other specialist bespoke courses are at some degree level or more on process safety now as well. So really, that would be a good foundation, particularly if you wanted to get into a safety, into a field of health and safety, starting with that certificate and then moving to the diploma. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, sir. You're muted, mate. Farouk, are you muted? Sorry, I was. I said. I thought it was my phone. <laughs> I said the last question before we move to the closing remark from your side. Uh, the question is what the top three issue preventing from establishing a safety culture? You mentioned somewhere there, but maybe you want to make it very clear. What's what the three things you need to remove it before you see the improvement happen? Right, you really do need that management commitment from the top. You okay, need to one. recognize it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, and to do it, it's better to do think three or four things well each year than seven or eight things badly. You okay. need the engagement at all levels, right? Which means everybody gets the same message, and you cascade it through the organisation at a steady pace, taking into account other constraints, other pressures. So you don't try and force feed it too quickly. You try and different cultures learn at different different ways and different rates. And third, the most and equally important as all of these things, is Really, a no-blame culture. Yes, people are going to make mistakes along the way. Yes, people are going to get things wrong. But let's try and coach them and work with them to make them recognise unsafe acts and safe conditions. If we punish people, they hide. If we're open and transparent, people reveal things and we can do something about it. So that, to me, they're the three big, big takeaways. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you uh, thank you for all this um, uh, useful information. And hopefully... Uh, people, if they need still uh, ask question for you, you can join us at the Notify platform, uh, the application, where there is an ask section there. You can just post the question, say, hey, uh, I have this question, whatever the question related to HSC. Uh, you and other subject matter experts who are, have the experience will come and uh, ready to help you for answering your questions. Uh, last thing, uh, Hugh, before we close our uh, session today, I uh, would like to get some closing remarks from you. Uh, what is about Notify and uh, how we, we take it from here? Well, again, Notify has got a lot of international experts, a lot of expertise, much broader than just mine. There's a lot of synergies there that can be gained. So I'd strongly recommend people to reach out to Notify, make best use, contribute, get involved, because I'm sure... As with the most safety professionals, we can earn, all learn from each other and all share. So the important thing is to get out there and make best use of this facility. Great, great, uh, Hugh. Uh, uh, thank you for this uh, encouraging remark. And uh, definitely we are in a journey, a journey of marathon again. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a short journey. I think we all, are we all aware that this is not an easy uh, steps or easy journey. Uh, to build a reliability or, uh, sorry, a safety culture, which is a reliability culture at the same time. It's not something you do it overnight. Uh, definitely here on Notify, we are uh, ready to help and uh, make uh, the community grow and we learn from each other. Nobody have the, the silver bullet and uh, the answer that's gonna help uh, anything and everything. There always, there is something uh, gonna be different from one organization to another. That's why you need an expert to ask and get the help. Thank you, everybody. I uh, appreciate your time and effort and see you maybe in next uh, week, uh, not the next week, the week after we will have another uh, two session related to process safety from Louise. She's a um, process safety expert from UK again. And uh, we'd like to invite you for this. Please stay tuned for our uh, LinkedIn profile or account where we're going to post our uh, next uh, webinar. Thank you. Have a good day. And uh, see you in the next two weeks from now. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.